insulted me as a white person. Um, of course, it was meant to. It was meant to. But you've been insulted by Obama since he took office for the same reason. Oh, yes. That is also true, Michael. Um, while I was on hold, I was... She went out of her way to make believe she's a big radical. Uh, brought, born into a wealthy family, made believe she uh, came up from the, from the slum. She didn't, the dancer, with the hats and the, the Black Panthers. They were a horrible, mean group of revolutionary garbage. That's what they were. They killed police. They killed innocent people. They're filth. They're garbage. What's the glorification of them? And I'm sick and tired of hearing about Black Lives Matter like everyone's a victim. Every criminal is a victim all of a sudden. Then they hold up signs about a guy they know nothing about, like he's a victim. The ambulance-chasing vicious lawyer who's representing him, everyone knows who that guy is, Boris, here in the Bay Area. One of the worst human beings ever produced on the planet. You couldn't produce anything worse in a laboratory, that ambulance chaser. Every time someone of color gets shot, he claims it's racism. It doesn't matter if they raped your grandmother before getting shot. That's what we have to put up with in the country today. I'll be back in a minute. San Francisco. All right, so we covered that. We covered the debate already. Good night. Have a nice night. No, Donald Trump's coming up at the top of the next hour. I have some, I think I'm going to ask him some tough questions tonight. I asked him four tough ones last time, but most of you are so facile and you're thinking you don't listen to a word I say. You think you know what I say, but you don't listen to what I say. I asked him four real questions, but no one heard it. No one published what I asked them, not Drudge, not Chris Ruddy at Newsmax. Nobody published it. Nobody I know published what I asked them. He answered four hard questions. But apparently, when I ask, it doesn't matter. You get some dunce at MSNBC asks a question, already it's a news story. Well, this idiot, Shepard, Schlepper Smith. Schlepper Smith, who crawled out of the rubble of the Fox News disaster. I don't know how he survives their trap between Blondie and, uh, and, 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 the, and the giant. I mean, he's you know, trapped between Blondie and the Giant. I don't know how the guy walks down the halls there. It feels like being in a high school with the two of them, the cheerleader and the Giant. And you, know, you don't want to talk about Beyonce performing a halftime homage to black radicals who support murder and killing? You thought that was appropriate for a ball game, wearing sex outfits like a bad burlesque? It was a disgrace. Forget about the fact that they're talentless. It's like a bunch of idiot girls walking around in like sex outfits screaming with whistles. Okay, that's one thing, but what, that's number one. But number two, what were they singing about? What were they jumping around, screaming with the whistles and the black hats for? What were they glorifying? Killing people? Burning things down? That's your idea of, of support during a crazy? Who picked them? They should have not picked them. They didn't belong there. I saw her, by the way, and I walked out. You don't know why I left when I was at the Super Bowl in New Orleans a few years ago. Remember I told you I left? It was one of the reasons I left was her. I'll, I'll play it for you. I was at the Super Bowl, great seats, in New Orleans. When she came out, I'd never heard of her. I, honest to God, I didn't. I, I thought she was a talentless performer. I found her offensive then, and I found her more offensive this time. That's all. Next case. Now we got the thing in New Hampshire. I'm supposed to worry about that now? Trump's ahead by like 38%. Carson, they're still going to wheel out up there? I, I, oh, he doesn't have to do anything now. They just go and vote. Can he stop already, please? It's embarrassing. Rubio was rubbed out. Carson was cursed at the event. Cruz careened forward. He did. Bush is bushed. He's finished. If it wasn't for his mother threatening him, I think he would have dropped out. If Barbara Bush stop, would stop threatening Bush, I think he'd gladly drop out. Kasich, I kind of like him, but you don't know what to do with him. He's like, he's like a guy who has... Uh, what do you call on an airplane when someone needs a vomit bag? And he, he raises his hand to get a puke bag. Kasich always that, has that look like he's about to vomit. Like the plane is too turbulent. I don't know what that's called. Travel sickness. And Christie, he looked very good, but he's not going to win. I don't, they don't like him. He lost 200 pounds, but he still looks... I don't think he can win. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Say your prayers, it's a one. Don't forget my son to include everyone. I tuck you in, all within. Keep your free from sin till the sand man he goes. So the world's falling apart. The Pentagon confirms minutes ago that North Korea launched a satellite into orbit, and we're arguing over what Bernie Sanders ate at Colonel Sanders' chicken establishment. That's American politics. Or whether Hillary Clinton's going to wear a pink jumpsuit or a green jumpsuit. It's astounding to me how dumb this country is. It's getting dumb and dumber. Pentagon confirmed North Korea launched a satellite into orbit. You could thank Hillary Clinton's husband for that. By the way, you want a history of that one? That's what should be brought up, incidentally. Okay, so you're watching this, you're watching that. Tomorrow night, I get it. Again, the campaign. I feel like I have been bitten by a campaign mosquito and it's putting me to sleep. I mean, there's a limit to this. But we're all involved with it from, from one thing to the other. Chicken wings and the, uh, uh, Beyonce, chicken wings, Black Panthers and the uh, debate. It's crazy. The, the country's like a mad, a mad place. People can't follow it anymore. The world is going to pieces because of the fraud in the White House. And don't get me started on that one because there are things coming out where he's literally signaling who he is. He's signaling who he works for. He's signaling what he's doing, and no one stops him. No one says a word about him like he's above the law. This guy, did you hear what came out over the weekend? I'm not going to just sit here and talk about it, but you have to hear this story. A former DHS agent who worked there 15 years came out over the weekend. He gave an interview. And he said that Obama ordered him to scrub records of Muslims who were terrorized. Nakedly, erase the records of Muslims who were terrorized. Now, going along with that, we have the most astonishing situation of two weeks ago when the rotten, stinking, subversive ACLU sued the NY Police Department, the New York Police Department, who did the greatest job in protecting New Yorkers, and they made the NYPD take down a 90-page report which showed the dangers that Americans are facing from radical Muslims and radical Muslim front groups in America, how to recognize a terrorist, how to recognize which Muslims are about to become radicalized, and how to stop them. The ACLU, the vermin in the ACLU who are subversives, all of whom should be tried as far as I'm concerned, and don't get me started, don't tell me I'm being overly right-wing. The ACLU is a terrorist front group, in my opinion, they forced the NYPD to take down the report on the dangerous Muslim subversive groups in America. And now we have Donald Trump coming in. Here he uh, joins us at the Savage Nation. All right, without any further uh, introduction, because he doesn't need any Donald Trump, thanks for being with us. Mr. Trump, did you hear my introduction at all about what they did with the NYPD uh, Muslim report? I did, and I know how you feel about it, because you haven't changed. One thing about you, Michael, you're a very consistent person like me. So That's right, and that's why people don't like us. In a world of malleable, changeable positions, we are like mountains, Donald, and they don't like mountains. They want to grind us down into sand. It's true. Now, your position has been very consistent and very the same as that. Uh, borders, language, culture. Donald, listen, do you know what the Democrat motto for New Hampshire is? No, tell me. Live free and get high. Oh, oh boy. That's uh, nice. I don't want to dread. No, don't agree with me on that. They'll use it against you. Let me take the, fl the, f the flack for that, for that one. Donald, there's a great article finally that came out about you. Someone said something good in the New York Post. Steve Cuozzo, C-U-O-Z-Z-O, -Z -Z -O, how Donald Trump helped save New York City. And although I've supported you, Donald, I didn't know that this is true, that you took this city from the garbage can and you took a chance on it in the mid 70s through the mid 90s when very few would do that and you rebuilt that city yeah i just read that article and steve is a fantastic guy and a great writer and it was very nice that he wrote that article he he actually called me and said you know i'd like to write an article because you've done so much to save new york and i did it at a time when it wasn't fashionable in many cases and you know it's been great for the city and i'm very happy and it was very nice that somebody would write that kind of an article i mean people listening across america should know that donald trump created something between 59th and 72nd Street that was nothing but old railway yards. It's now a home to over 10,000 people. 
He built the Trump International Hotel and Tower, which I stayed in, by the way, on my last trip. It's a fantastic, beautiful building. That's the, the old Gulf and Western building. This was an area filled with vagrants in Central Park. You freshened up that area. I'm going to go down the list. I don't care if people say I'm, I'm being too nice to you. You created the Walman Skating Rink in 1986, 40 Wall Street, 1995, Trump Plaza, 16070, 61st Street, completed in 1984. That's before half of these candidates were even born. You were doing these things. And I don't want to sit here listening to people run you down when it's all false, Donald. That's the reality of it. But the bigger issue for me, and I want you to talk, sorry, I'm, I'm excited over this thing of the NYPD report. I'm excited over the DHS agent who worked there 15 years who said that Obama personally ordered him to expunge all records of dangerous Muslim front groups in America. You're the only one bringing up this issue, Donald. I know. It's, uh, you know, it's radical Islamic terrorism, and we have a president that won't even use the words. And if you don't use the words, you're never going to get rid of the problem. But we, we have, uh, maybe he doesn't want to get rid of the problem. I don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, won't, uh -huh. won't uh, now, now you're going as close to the, to the board as a, as a hockey player can go without hitting the puck into the, into the stands. I get it. This is where I'm going. I can't believe the man is nakedly doing these things. But, Donald, let's talk about New Hampshire for a minute. You're way ahead of the pack, correct? Okay, yes, yeah, so far. Oh, you're not even saying you're going to win? Well, I don't want to really say it because I don't want to bring myself any bad luck. I mean, I'm doing well. The polls look good. The enthusiasm is incredible. Tonight we're going to have a crowd of four or 5,000 people out, although it's snowing, so I don't know. Maybe that'll be a little bit smaller, but... Uh, we are doing really well up here. I'm here now. I'm in New Hampshire right now. And, in fact, I just turned down big, big, big interviews in order to talk to my man, to, to Michael. <laughs> you've been, Donald, you've been so listen, I watched, I watched a debate the other night. I saw something different this time. I saw Christy rubbing out Rubio. I saw poor Carson standing like a schmendrick in the entranceway. I didn't even know they called his name. And you're the only candidate that didn't, didn't step over him. I mentioned that on my show. All the others walked by him like he wasn't there. He didn't hear it or something. You actually stood there with him and told him his name was called, and you said, Ben, go ahead. You were called first. Do you remember that? Yeah, I did, and I sent him out. And, and uh, you know, I'll tell you, he's a nice man. And, you know, it was very interesting. It was not his fault. You couldn't hear a thing back there. It was really the fault of the network because you couldn't hear anything. So I walked out, and I saw Ben standing. I said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be out there. And I stood with him until they got it straight. But it wasn't Ben's fault because you couldn't hear a thing. And... Yeah, people thought it was very nice that I stood with them as everybody else walked by. But That's right. They stepped over basically a, a person who had fallen in the street, and that tells you an awful lot about people. And people should – see, here's the thing, Donald. It's, it's like me. Brash people from New York are often called names that don't apply to them. They think if you're direct and honest that you're a mean person. And what they don't understand is I've lived on the West Coast most of my adult life. All these nice people will stick a knife in your back faster than anybody that I've ever met in New York, to be honest with you. I prefer people who are upfront with what they are saying rather than hidden in their agendas. So that comes down to your agenda. There's so many things people are criticizing you for. Let's go into it for a minute or two. This thing with eminent domain, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't think it's that, that important or that interesting. I want to talk about the war on terror. How would you crush ISIS? I know you don't want to give away a, a battle plan, but I don't think it's that complicated. Putin's doing a pretty good job, and that's where I disagree with Cruz. What is wrong with Cruz that he says Russia is our number one enemy? Is he crazy? Well, first of all, let me talk for one second. Eminent domain, without eminent domain, you won't have roads, you won't have bridges, you won't have highways, you won't have anything. Uh, this guy Bush is a total lightweight. He's the one that brought it up. He's a lightweight. And now it turned out that his family used eminent domain, private eminent domain, to build their Texas stadium, you know. So yeah. this is what you have to go through with this world. The politics is crazy. But as far as ISIS is concerned, you have to crush them, and you have to crush them fast. You know, one of the reasons we haven't taken out the oil, Michael, I don't know if you heard this, but because they didn't want to affect the environment, okay, because we'd have oh, yeah. you know, pollution. Oh, yeah, no, that's <laughs> Obama's priority is global warming, not beating ISIS. I get it. He's, he's completely milquetoast the entire military. But, Donald, I want to talk about foreign policy. You have clearly said, and I agree 100%, that we need to make <clears throat> Putin and Russia our ally in the war against ISIS. That makes perfectly good sense. It's logical. It was only when Putin started to bomb them that, that Obama made a, a few more moves against them. Ted Cruz seems to be advised by the same neocons who got us into Iraq to begin with, and he's making Putin our enemy. Don't you think that's a critical error? Well, Putin said great things about me. And, you know, and look, I've been, I know when I'm being played and all, but he said Trump is brilliant, Trump is their real leader and all that stuff. And you know what? 
I accept it, okay? I would say, the, the people say, oh, you should disavow that. Here's the story. 